Hi everyone, welcome to Jabateki. This tutorial is remake of our earlier Spring security video as lot of people faced issue on existing code and they suggest me to remake this content. That's the reason I'm repeating this again. Okay, all right. In this tutorial, we'll implement role-based authorization by considering one real-time scenario. So if you have been part of any Facebook group, then you must have some role assigned to you. For example, this is the group which I created, right? Now if I will go to this member section and if I will go down, I can find couple of role here, right? As I created this group, I have admin access and there is couple of member who have moderator access. So by default, if a new user joined to this group, so the role will be user. And as a admin or as a moderator, if I want or moderator want, we can assign him as a moderator. But as a admin, either I can give admin access to the user or moderator access to the user. But let's assume this Dhananjay, he is a moderator. He can give only moderator access to the user. So for example, as I have admin access, so if I will click on this Mohammed Savan Khan and here I have option to make admin or make moderator. If I will click on make moderator, he will be moderator and the invitation will send to this particular user. Similarly, if there is new post in group, a admin or moderator can only approve that. Either they can approve or they can reject. Either they can approve as a single post or they can approve as a bulk post. Okay. So this is what the feature given by Facebook. So we are going to implement same kind of uh, features using this spring security concept. So in this part one video, I will just cover this role based authorization. By default, the user who will join to this group have the role user and as a admin, we can give someone to the moderator access or as a moderator, we can give someone to the only moderator access. Okay. So this is the scenario we are going to cover as part of this tutorial. So let's begin with the development. Let's get started. Let's quickly create one Spring Boot project. Click on File, click on Project, click Next. So specify the group ID, com dot Java Techie. Then I will specify the project name as Java Techie Group Service or something like that. Then change the Java version to 8. Also I will specify the same as my project name. Then change the package here, com dot Java Techie dot Group. Okay. Now click next. So let's add the required dependency Lombok. Then we'll add Spring Web. Then we are going to integrate with database. So we'll add Spring Data JPA. Also we want MySQL. And we want Spring Security. Fine. Also, if you observe here, the Spring Boot version we are using 2.4.0. So click on next. If anything else we need, we'll add later. Click next. Now click on finish. Let me minimize this. Now if you'll go to the project, go to the SRC, main, Java, then the package. So let me create a couple of packages. So let me pause this video. Yeah, so if you observe, I created a couple of packages common, config, controller, entity, repository, then service. Okay, so let's begin with our entity class. Let me create a class. Let's name it user. Then let me add a couple of field ID, username, password, active, and the role. Okay, so you can create separate multiple entity. You can create an entity called user and you can create an entity called role. Then you can make them a relationship one to many. But for this example, I directly keep in a single user class. Okay. As you added Lombok, we can directly annotate here at the red data. We want all argument constructor. We want no argument constructor. Also, we can give two string. As this is my entity, I need to annotate at the red entity. And I need to specify the table name. Okay. I'll give 
user auth tbl something like that okay and as this is the id which is my primary key i need to annotate at the rate id and i want this id value should be auto generated so i will use i want at generator generated value fine we created entity now as our application need to integrate with our mysql we need to add our data source related properties in our application dot properties file right so i have that let me copy this fine so let's format it properly so these things you need to change based on your configuration okay so this is what the database name which i created so if you will go to my mysql this is what the database i created right now let's write our jpa repository okay so just create a class now make it interface so i'll name it user repository then extend it from jpa repository as you are using spring data jpa okay so the first argument will be your entity so the entity is user and then primary key of your entity that is the integer right fine we created our entity and we configure all the data source properties and we created our user repository now let's write the config file where we can authenticate the user so go to the config create a class create a class called java security i'll directly specify security config we need to annotate this at the rate configuration then we need to annotate enable global method security or enable web security also we need to enable global method security okay inside that we just need to specify the authority role right so based on the role user can access the api so that's why there is something called secure enable make it true and pre post enable make it true fine now here we just need to override the configure method but to override the configure method we need to extend this class from web security configure adapter okay then you need to override the configure method so if you observe here there is three overloaded configure method right so the purpose of each method is different so we'll use all these three method so as of now i'll implement the second one okay so just override this so if you observe here there is a authentication manager builder with the help of authentication manager builder we can authenticate a user so if you are not aware about spring internal flow spring security internal flow you can check out this particular tutorial okay how does spring security authentication work so if you understand this then it will be easy for you to understand so what we'll do here just remove this auth dot user detail service and here we need to pass the user detail service where we need to write the logic to face the user details from our database based on the input username and password okay so what i will do i will just inject a user detail service class so i'll inject using auto add same user detail service i need to pass here okay fine now we need to create a implementation of this user detail service where you need to inject our repository so that we can interact with our database and we can load the user based on the user input okay so what i will do i will just create a class here i will name it group user detail service then implements it from user detail service okay now we just need to override one method so if you observe this method load user by username okay so this will be your username which will pass from the spring security then based on username we need to go to our database and we need to load the user then we can verify whether that particular user is exist or not right so for that what i need to do i, I just need to inject the repo here right 
प्राइवेट यूजर रेपो देन हियर वी जस्ट नीड टू राइट ए एपीआई और मेथड टू कॉल आवर डेटाबेस राइट सो यू कैन डायरेक्टली राइट रिपोजिटरी डॉट फाइंड बाय यूजर नेम और व्हाट एवर द फील्ड वी हैव सो दिस इज द फॉर्मेट वी नीड टू राइट इन स्प्रिंग डाटा जेपीए सो जस्ट गो टू द यूजर एंड द नेम वी स्पेसिफाई यूजर नेम राइट फाइंड बाय देन फील्ड नेम वी नीड टू स्पेसिफाई सो इट शुड बी कैपिटल देन पास द यूजर नेम नाउ लेट्स क्रिएट दिस मेथड इन आवर रेपो सो लेट इट रिटर्न ऑप्शनल ऑफ यूजर Fine. Now let's do the change in our service. So add the return type user. Okay. But if you observe your the return type of this load user by user name is user details. So if you will go inside this user details, it will have the password, user name, and whether your account expired or not, account locked or not, and even credential expired or not, and this user is enable or not. these are the field we need to pass we no need to pass the user object directly right so we need to convert our user object to this user details object that's the reason what we need to do i will create a class this is also one interface so i will just create a class user details so i'll name it group user details or something like that i will implement it from user details now we'll override all the method fine what i'll do i'll just create a constructor and i will pass the user object directly okay from the user object we'll set all the value so i'll write a constructor public group user details i will pass the user object now what i'll do i'll just declare few field so something like password username and authorities so based based on that we just need to set in the method return type okay so i will name it private string username private string password private boolean is active then private list of grant authority so if you observe here this is what the grant authority right we just need to set that so this grant authority is nothing the role of a user so what we'll do this will be bit tricky we'll do control v i didn't copy it fine now what we'll do this dot username user dot get user name right so this particular local variable i am assigning to the user which i get from my database because ultimately i just need to convert this user object to user details that's what spring security understand spring security don't understand your own user object he will always search for the user details so that's what i explained in that uh, internal security flow video you can check that once okay similarly initialize all other fields this dot password equal to user dot get password then this dot is active equal to user dot is active now the tricky part is this one this authorities because if you observe in our entity class the role we are storing as a string so the role can be something like this role underscore user even a user can have admin access role underscore admin like this so we need to split this string and we need to convert it to the collection right so what we need to do for that go to the group details <coughs> so here what we need to do this dot authorities equal to rs dot stream of user dot get role dot split we need to split using comma 
right that's how we are storing in our database then we just need to map it to simple uh, grant authority or some yeah then we just need to convert as a list fine so let me format this yeah so the role i split based on the comma then i convert that role to the simple grant authority i created this new object then i convert that to list okay now these authorities will be store these two list uh, these two role so this one role user and role admin that's how i designed it now what we'll do we'll just return it authorities and password then username so let it be true we don't want to assign this value make it true and this is enable will display as a is active format it fine now what we did here we just convert our user object to user details object which is group user details right now let's go to our group user detail service class and here we just need to call that method right so just simply do this user dot map okay then our class this is where the group user details we created right this user object we want to map to this group user details that's how i did this so just add it here then get it but if this user is not exist then what we need to do before that i'll i'll directly not return i'll do here or else throw new this user not found exception okay so i'll return some message here so let me format this username does not exist something like that exist in system it makes sense right fine so we created our own user detail service where we can authenticate a user based on the username so while login i need to pass the username and password based on the username i will load the user object from my database then i will convert that user object to user details object i will return it so that it will set to my spring security context okay fine so we created the config and we created entity repository and we wrote the authentication logic right now let's write the endpoint then we'll specify the role and authority who can access my api okay so what i'll do i'll just write a class in controller java class i'll name it user controller then we need to annotate this with at the rate rest controller fine then i need to annotate at the rate request mapping i will specify the root url as a user slash user okay so as i explained there will be two api i am going to write once the user need to onboard to this group with the role by default user role and then i have i need to write one more api to give the access to that particular user either as a moderator or either as a admin okay so this two endpoint i am going to write here so public then i'll return the user object or else i'll simply return the string object join group okay so this will be my post method so i will annotate at the rate post mapping then i just need to pass the request body annotation and i need to pass the user object which i want to persist to my database so i just want to interact to database from this controller so i just need to inject the repo here private user repository inject using auto add so now what i can do i can directly use repository dot save and i can pass the user object 
right and i will return some string something like this user dot get username welcome to group or something like that right welcome to group fine but if you go to this user class we have a field called password i don't want to store the password in hard code format i just want to encrypt it right and also by default i just want to assign the role as a user that's what we just need to modify here so go to this user controller to encrypt the password there is a class called bcrypt uh, bcrypt password so declare it as a private then i just need to auto edit also i just need to create a bin of this in my config class go to the security config i'll create a bin of this class return new this object just annotate at the red bin okay now go to this controller class so we just want to encrypt the password and we just want to define the default role of a user so user dot set roles i will specify role underscore user okay so let's not hard code here i'll define as a class level variable default role something like that okay it's not typing default role fine and then we just need to encrypt the password so use password encoder dot encrypt or encode then get the password from input user dot get password so i can define this as a string encrypted password and i just want to set to this user object right user dot set password this encrypted password okay so two things we did here we encrypt the password and we assign the default role to the new user okay so by default the role will be user fine so i just want to specify the url join fine now we just need to write one more api so in that api we just need to write a logic to give permission to the user so i'll write the condition here if logged in user is admin he can give two access either admin access or moderator access but if logged in user is moderator so i'll copy this if logged in user is moderator he can only give moderator access okay so this api we are going to write the next one okay so let's write it public string give access to the user access to user pass the user id pass the role which you want to provide user role okay and pass the principal object to know who give that access okay principal will always give the name of logged in user so what i need to do i just want to pass this value as a request parameter so i will specify path variable so this value also i will specify path variable and then i need to annotate this at the rate gate mapping so there is no object i was passing as a input so I, we are not going to write as a post mapping so specify the url user access slash pass the user id which will be dynamic parameter then pass the user role just copy this fine 
so before write this api first we need to know who is the logged in user right so that's the reason i will write one private method who will return me the user object get logged in user pass the principal object then what i will do i'll just return repository dot uh, find by username the username i will get from the principal object it will return me the logged in user so what is the okay this is the optional so get the object fine now i get the logged in user so i should know the logged in user access whether he is a moderator or he is a admin based on that i can assign the role to the user right if i am a moderator i don't have permission to give admin access to someone that's what the uh, feature right so that's why i'll write one more private method private list of uh, string because i just want to return the role right so get roles by logged in user something like that so just import it and i need to pass the principal object here so let's write the logic so this is very simple so what i'll do i'll just go up okay so first let's get the logged in user the method we wrote recently then get all the roles it will return me the role as a string right so string roles or something like that then i just need to split the role based on the uh, comma right because that is what we wrote here right so if you go to this user details go to this service so this is how we just split the role because the role we assigned like this i already explain you in my entity class how the role will be saved in my db like this so we just need to split the role based on this comma okay so what i'll do list of string assign roles then get the roles dot split it using semicolon so i'll just convert it to rs dot stream dot collect as a list fine now what you need to do we just need to check the role if it is admin then return the role access which admin can provide okay so if you observe this assigned role is logged in user assigned role so what i'll do if assign roles dot contains role underscore admin then return rs dot stream so what i will do i will just declare a constant which admin can return if the access is means if the user role is admin he can provide these two access role admin and role moderator so similarly i will add for moderator then he can only give the role moderator okay so we'll write this okay so admin access dot list similarly check for the moderator if logged in user role is contains role moderator then return moderator access fine else just return the empty list else not required here you can directly return it collections
fine so this particular method will get the role based on the logged in user and it will just check what role this user contains if it contains the admin then he can give these two access if he contains moderator then he can give this access to the user nothing else okay now we just need to implement this in our actual api so what we'll do let me minimize this first get the existing user means to whom you want to give the uh, permission or role just get that user based on this id so i'll use repository dot find by id give the user id it will give you the user object right log means not logged in user id the user id which we are passing to give the permission so it will just give the user object okay this will dot get this will also optional fine now just get the active roles okay based on the logged in user which role he can provide get those roles so what i'll do get roles by logged in user pass the principal object then define the local variable i'll name it active roles okay now simply just check the role which we are trying to assign is part of this active roles or not because this active roles will be the role which a uh, logged in user can provide right so what i'll do i'll just write a if condition if active roles dot contains role type which will pass as part of uh, input no it is user role user role then just set that role to this user object that's it so what i'll do i'll simply write user dot get roles dot so we no need to get the roles we just need to append that role okay give the comma and append the new role fine so i will define a variable string new role so i'll name it new role equal to this then set this new role to user object user dot set role new role this new role will contain the existing role of the user and the new role which we are assigning to the user okay now what i'll do i'll simply repository dot save uh, user that's it and then we just need to return some message hi then give the user uh, what is that user dot get user just inform that who give the access okay new role assigned to you by get the logged in user name principal dot get name that's it okay so now we wrote two api the first api will add the user to the group so for this we no need to add any authentication mechanism but for this particular uh, second api where we are just giving the access to the existing user there we just need to enable the role based authorization i mean the moderator and admin can only access this api user can't access this api okay so for understanding purpose let me add two more uh, end point so i have the template let me copy paste <coughs> so i'll just add here that is just for testing purpose one will fetch all the uh, user from the repo and one will only return because i just want to specify the i just want to demonstrate the authorization how it works okay that's why so this particular api can be only accessed by user this particular api can be accessed by only admin or moderator similarly this second api also can be accessed by only admin and moderator 
but for this fast api there is no restriction anyone can join the group so we don't need to add any authentication for this particular method so this authorization things we need to configure in our config file right so there is one more configure method just override it not this one this one so first we need to disable the csrf fine then we just need to authorize all the request based on the url pattern right so http authorize request dot aunt matchers if url is coming from slash user slash join then permit all there is no authentication required for this particular endpoint that's what i mention here right where is my controller this guy for this first method i don't want to add any authentication or authorization that's what i specify here if request is coming from slash user slash join then permit all the request and authorize all the request authorize sorry authorize all the request if the url is coming from any other just specify the and matchers so slash user slash star star so i'll just split it okay so for this particular endpoint we are just disabling the security but authorize all the request if the request is coming from slash user slash star star for any other endpoint just authenticate it okay authenticated dot HTTP basic authentication we want. So hope this makes sense. One URL pattern to disable the security. One URL pattern to enable the security. I mean this particular method is for authorization. So let me specify here authorization. And this particular method used for authentication. Okay. So this is how Spring Security actually work. There is overloaded configure method. You need to understand what used for authentication and what used for authorization. Now I guess we are good, but we just need to enable the authority to access the API. So what I'll do, I'll just, for this we don't need anything, but for this we just need to validate whether the uh, user who is trying to access having the admin or moderator access or not. So what I'll do, I'll just, there is something called pre-authorized, okay. Then specify has authority role admin or has authority role moderator. If the logged in user has authority role admin or has authority role moderator, then only he can able to access this endpoint, okay. Also, if you want to specify, you can specify secure role admin or role moderator like that okay but the purpose of these two annotation is different so for this example we need this pre-authorized but if you want to validate based on the api based on has role you can go for this secured also has role you can go for this pre-authorized also okay so now let uh, let's add for other api so let me copy this so this i want can be accessed by only admin so i will remove this okay so for demo purpose let me add this secured also even you will not add this secured it will work now the last api can be accessed by only user admin can't access this user information so i just return a string we just need to add some real time scenario means real time world example here so i'll just copy paste this this can be accessed by only user fine so there is no url for this i can directly access using user slash user right so i guess we are good now let's start our application but before that let's follow the coding practice we'll not add this here go to the project already I created a folder called uh, common so just add it here 
user constant fine now let me copy this class name in controller I can directly use this fine now let's run our application first we'll add couple of user then we'll go for the other API testing based on the authority okay yeah so let me start my application go to the main class run as java application so let's wait it to complete there is some compilation error com.java tiki this class is not found it need auto add so go to this class ok so we need to annotate here at the red service that's why spring is not able to scan this bin right now save this and let's restart it starting now so if you observe our application is up and running now let's try to access the endpoint so the first endpoint we just need to add the user to this group right so for this we disable the spring security so go to the postman method type is post type HTTP local host 9090 user join body raw then change the media type and give the request so username password and active user id will be auto generated and role by default you are setting as a user right now click on send one record inserted now let me add couple of record so i will add smith change the password to pwd2 then i will add basant i will change the password to 3 Santos then I will add Ajay password 5 ok so I added 5 user object now let's verify the same in our database so just refresh it go to this I change the table name to the user authentication table ok so you can see here we added the 5 user object and the ID started from 29 and I don't know why it's behaving like this ok so our intention to check with the username and password let it be so by default all the user having the role user so I need to make someone as a admin so that we can perform all the operation right so what I will do I will just write a update query so just write update then table name set the field roles equal to I just want to give the admin role right so I will specify role underscore admin then give the where condition where id equal to so I just want to make this guy as uh, admin ok 31 now just select the table fine so if you observe the role has changed to role admin so this guy having the role admin now as a admin I just want to give moderator access to some of the user that's what our second API right if that API will tried by any user then he won't be able to access that API can be accessed only using admin or moderator so let's go to the endpoint if you observe here this particular give access to user API can be accessed by who is having the authority role admin or role moderator right as this guy is admin so I can give moderator access to some of the user so let's try that uh, let me copy the endpoint access paste it here 
okay then what we need to pass so if you observe here access then pass the user id to whom you want to give the permission then pass the user role what permission you want to give right so if you go to the db so for this first user i just want to make him moderator okay so i'll give the id as 29 go to the postman and i want to give him a role moderator okay fine now this is the get api just change it and you need to pass the authentication right that is the basic auth so click on this basic auth now you need to pass the username and password so this api can be accessed by only admin and moderator so let's try to access this using any of the user then we'll see how we are getting the error so let me try this guy okay smith because if you observe the role is user and the password of smith is pwd2 right update the request and click on send so if you observe we are getting 403 which is forbidden it means that particular user don't have access to this api okay so now who can access this the guy who is having admin access currently we have only one user who have the admin access so let's pass that credential button then password 3 update the request send it now you can see here right hi john new role assigned to you by basant this is what the string message we are returning from our controller isn't it so now if you will go and verify in your database if you observe john have two access by default the uh, role is user and second we just assigned to moderator now if john will try to give access to someone he can give only moderator access he can't give admin access so let's try that so let's log in by john and we want to give to this guy 33 okay john pwd1 and he can only give the role moderator if i will give role admin it won't work to the user what is the user 31 red 33 okay hi ajay new role assigned to you by john if you go and check in your db to this guy there is no change right because he can't give the admin access but if he he will try the moderator access he can give it because this guy is moderator only right now if you will verify in your database you can see here right it got changed to moderator now i can give the admin access if i log in through this button okay so this api is working as expected now go to the third api so this particular load user it will return list of user from our db this can be accessed by only admin okay so let's verify in db who have all user access uh, santosh he is a user let's try to access that by a user okay user so let's give the santosh and password is password is 4 right pwd4 update the request you will get 403 because the role of this particular santosh is user and this api particular api can be accessed by only admin even moderator can't also access this so let's try with the moderator okay so who is having moderator john john and password is one update the request send it you are getting 403 because we specify this can be accessed by the person who is having the authority sorry this one who is having the authority admin okay now let's try access using admin go to the postman who is the admin give it basant 
pwd3 update the request send it we can see all the user here right let me drag this up okay we can see all the user here now let's go to the next api yeah so if you observe the next api can only accessed by the user if admin or moderator will try to access this it don't work okay so let's try accessing by admin user slash test so already i logged in by admin right so why it's not going down yeah this is the admin now if i try to access it i will get 403 because this particular api can be accessed by only user so who is the user let me verify on db smith john everyone is user apart from this basant okay because this john have role user and moderator access he can also able to access this because he have user access so let's try this update the request send it he can able to access right user can only access this so this is how we can implement role based authorization in any of our real time application so in my next tutorial i will cover one more feature if you go to the facebook group there is an option called pending post if i am a admin or i am a moderator i can see this option okay so if i will click on this pending post as i am a admin i can do the bulk approval if i will tick mark and if i will click on this approve all the pending post will be approved similarly if i will click on decline all the pending post will be rejected if i want to do individually i can do that click on approve it will approve the post click on decline it will decline the post okay this is part 2 spring security role based authorization session so if you remember in part 1 session we understand user access management feature of facebook right so in this part 2 session we'll cover facebook post management scenario okay all right so if you can see this diagram there is a option called pending post if i logged in as a admin or moderator i can see the number of pending post so currently the pending post is count one now if you click on this pending post there is a option if you are only admin or moderator you can either approve it or decline it let's assume there is couple of pending post and you want to do the operation as a bulk so you just click on this and approve so all the pending post will be approved that time similarly if you want to decline just click on this all the pending post will be declined so this is what the post management feature for a specific group and we are going to design the same kind of application but currently i will focus only in backend code Based on your interest, we will integrate the same application with Angular in future. Okay. So let's go to our IntelliJ ID. This is what the example we created in our session 1. Right. So now we need to introduce one more new entity called post. Right. So let me create a new entity class. I'll name it post. Then let's add couple of field. Post ID, subject, description okay and also i want to map the user who post it string username you can map the user id but here i don't want to perform any association mapping then also i just want to store the status of that particular post when a new user posts something to the group by default the status will be pending once the admin or moderator will do the action either approve or decline then the status will change right so what i'll do i'll just create a enum class new java class so i'll name it post status so the status can be three things right pending which is by default then approved or rejected right so pending will be default status for a particular post and then based on the admin or moderator access the status will be changed to either approve or reject fine now go to the entity so i'll define this private post status status but we can't store any enum to our database right so i just want to store that status value as a string so there is a annotation called enumerated 
and I want to store it as a string. Fine. Uh, this is my entity. I need to annotate at the rate right entity. Also, I need to annotate at the rate right table. We need to specify the table name. Posts. Then I need to define the primary key. So I will use annotation at the rate right ID. Also, I want it to be auto generated. Okay. Then as we add a lumbok, we no need to add getter setter manually. I can annotate here at the rate right data, at the rate right all argument constructor, at the rate right no argument constructor. Also, we want two string. Fine. Now let's create a repository for this particular entity. So go to our repository package. Now create a new repo called let it be interface. Then we'll name it post repository, right? Then extend it from JPA. We need to specify the entity here, which is post, and also primary key of our entity, the data type of our primary key. Fine. Now let me create a separate controller for this. Go to this controller package. Let me create a class called post controller. Just annotate here at the rate rest controller. And I just want to annotate a root URL of it. Request mapping slash post. Okay. So we can create a service class, but in this example, I am not adding any service class here. Okay. So for best coding practice, you just need to add a service layer. Don't interact directly to your repo from this controller. So let me inject the repo here. Private post repository. I'll use auto add. Okay. So first we should give some option or we should expose some API where user can create a post, right? So I'll name the method public. I'll write some message, create post. Then you need to pass the request, which is nothing post. So we need to annotate this at the rate request body. And also we need to annotate this at the rate post mapping right because you have the request body so i'll name it create now let's save this post object to our database so what i can do i can just write post repo dot save and i can pass the post object here right but by default the status of every post should be pending so i'll do the modification here post dot set status post status dot pending then also I just want to map the username who created this post. So I'll do something called post dot set username and I can get the username from the principal object. So I'll add the parameter here. Just call principal dot get name. Okay. It will give the logged in username. That means logged in user created this post. Now I just want to return something. User, your post published successfully, it required admin or moderator action. Okay, fine. So, this particular method create post can be called by any user. So, it can be user or admin or moderator. That's the reason for this particular API. I'm not going to add any role based authorization because this method can be called by anyone. So, let me format this. Yeah, now let's write one more API to approve the post, means just get the post ID and get the post object from DB then approved it. We are not going to perform any bulk operation for now. So let's write one API public string approve post pass the post ID and we need to annotate this at the rate path variable. So just annotate here at the rate get mapping and the URL will be approve post okay single post based on the post id so make it capital fine now first let's get the post object from db based on the post id so i'll write post repo dot find by id pass the post id okay so just get it because it will return the optional post 
fine so by default the status will be pending so we just need to change the status to approve post dot set status post status dot approved fine now just save it so simply we are just updating the status here based on the post id we will get the post object from db then we are just changing the status because approve single post that's why we are passing the post id as argument so i'll pass it here fine now let's write api so better let me return something post approved now let's write one more api for bulk approval means if there is lot of pending post was there i just want to approve all at single shot so what i can do i'll just write a method public string approve all so just annotate here at the red gate mapping then add the url slash approve all fine so what we need to do first we need to get all pending post from db then we just need to change the status for this particular method we are doing for single post but here for all the pending post okay so how can i get all the pending post from db just use the post repo dot find all it will give you all the post then just filter it so we just need to convert it to stream then filter it post dot get status dot equals pending okay give me all the post whose status is pending that's what i was filtering here then just iterate it okay now here i will just change the status post dot set status to post status dot approved then save it it makes sense right from database i was getting all the pending post and then i was just setting the status to approved and i was again updating in database so let me return something approved all post fine same way we need to write api for reject the post and reject all the post okay so better let me copy this remove post change the url here just change the status to rejected fine then update it post rejected just do the, the same way for decline all change the url to reject all change the method to reject all then change the status here to rejected fine let's write one more api to view all the approved post okay so once user will logged into the group he can only view the post which is status approved so let me write a method public list of post view all something like that fine just do this just change the filter to the status which is approved okay then collect it as a list and then return it okay so let me format it 
filter all the post from DV whose status is approved, then convert it to list and return it to me. That's what I wrote here, right? Just annotate here. Get mapping. Pass the URL. View all. Okay. So now, who can access this particular view all? It can be accessed by everyone. It can be accessed by user or admin or moderator. That's why again for this particular method, I'm not going to add any role based authorization. But this action, reject all, approve all or reject a post, approve a post. This particular API can be accessed by only admin or moderator, right? So that's the reason I will annotate this at the rate pre-authorized. This is what we learned in our previous session, right? So this particular reject all method can be accessed by either admin or the user whose role is moderator. Okay. Same for this action as well. Same for this approval. User can do this operation. Okay. He can't approve anyone's post or he can decline. So let me add it here. Fine. For this particular method and the last one to view all, to create a post and to view all the post, there is no authorization. Fine. So I guess we are done. We just added six rest endpoint. One will create the post. One will approve the single post. One will approve all the post. Similarly, one will remove a single post and one will remove all the post. Fine. Now what we can do? Let's run our application. So let me format it. Fine. Now let me start my application. But before that, what you need to do, we just need to configure this URL in our Spring Security config file because we enable the role based authorization. So what I'll do, I'll just go here and I'll annotate here or I'll specify the URL here. Let me add it. Slash post. So I'm telling to Spring Security if URL is coming with slash post slash star star, then authenticate all the requests. Okay, with the HTTP basic authentication. So what you need to do, let's start our application now. So we can observe here, our application started now on port 9090. So let's go to the database. Let me verify a couple of user. Go to this schema. Yeah. So we have five user here. So let me try with the user because user or admin or moderator, anyone can create the post, right? So I will take this guy, Smith. So go to the postman. This is where the API HTTP localhost 9090 slash post slash create. So I will go to this authorization at the basic auth. I will give Smith and I guess the password is PWD2. Okay. So password, update the request, send it. Smith, your post published successfully. It required admin and moderator access. Now if you will go and verify in your database, go to this table, just open it. You can see the by default status is set to pending. But I don't know why this ID is behaving like this. It should start from one, right? Okay. Find that we'll analyze later. Now let me add a couple of more post. So let's give something called string. Remove duplicate from string solution something like that just add some random for testing purpose okay now let's try with some other guy let me check the user so let's try with the admin basant change the authorization here and i guess password 3 update the request change the uh, this object and description so i'll give something called exception super class of 
exception send the request person your post published successfully it required admin and moderator action okay but i am a admin but we wrote the logic it will always return the same fine so what we need to do but better we should add a check here actually in our post controller we should add a check if admin or moderator is creating any post then the status by default will be approved so for admin or moderator there we no need to set the status to pending okay no problem now let's try to approve or decline the post by a user it should throw the forbidden access error because this approve or decline the post can be done by either admin or moderator right now what we can do let's check the post id in our db we created three post right 34 35 36 so let me try any of one trying for 34 i am trying to approve it so it will be get request but i am not going to approve it by admin so let's try with the user we should see the forbidden access that's what the motto of this tutorial right so user is smith fine Smith password is two pwd two update the request now send the request okay I guess I missed the URL something let's check in our controller approve post so the URL is approve post now update the request send it we are getting four not three because this particular API is trying to access by a user means a user whose role is user. Now, if you'll try with any moderator or admin, you'll get the response. So, what I'll do? I'll check who is moderator here. This guy is moderator John. So, let me try with John. PWD one. Update the request. Send it. Post approved. Now, if you'll go and check in your DB. The status got changed to approved. Now, any either admin or moderator can approve all the post, or he can approve. Sorry, he can decline all the post. So let's try with the approve all. Okay. So let's try approve all with a user. Then we'll see the error. Then we'll try with the admin or moderator. So what I'll do? The URL is approve all, right? Remove this. Approve all. Change the user to Smith. Who is a user who don't have access to access this particular API? Password is two. Update the request. We are getting the four not three, right? Now let's try with the admin. Basant. Password three. Update the request and send it. Approve all the post. Okay. Now if you go and verify in your DB, you could see all the post. is got approved right so similar way you can try for reject and reject all scenario that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept